It's February here in Washington State, which is the perfect time to harvest cottonwood buds for medicine, especially to infuse those resinous buds into oil. I honestly can't imagine my life without this powerful tree and cottonwood bud oil, which I use in practically all of my herbal salves, creams, and body butters. More on that in just a bit. Hello and welcome to the Herbs with Rosalie podcast, a show exploring how herbs heal as medicine, as food, and through nature connection. I'm your host, Rosalie de la Forêt. I created this YouTube channel to share trusted herbal wisdom so that you can get the best results when relying on herbs for your health. I love offering up practical knowledge to help you dive deeper into the world of medicinal plants and seasonal living. Each episode of the Herbs with Rosalie podcast is shared on YouTube as well as your favorite podcast app. Transcripts and recipes for each episode can be found at herbswithrosaliepodcast.com or through the link in the video description. Also in the video description, you'll find other helpful resources. For example, to get my best herbal tips, as well as fun bonuses, be sure to sign up for my weekly herbal newsletter. Okay, grab your cup of tea and let's dive in. Today, we're recording this cottonwood bud video from inside our warm and cozy cabin. Admittedly, I wanted to record this outside with the cottonwood trees, hugging the banks of the Metau River, but the snow and the bright sun made recording pretty tricky, definitely beyond our basic camera skills. We did go to one of my favorite trails, and once we realized recording wasn't possible, I harvested some branches to bring home. One advantage to recording this inside is that you don't have to hear my chattering teeth. The day we went out to film, it was 18 degrees Fahrenheit or negative 7 degrees Celsius. I do love to visit that trail all times of the year because every time we're there, we see many different signs of life, like kingfishers, river ducks, deer, coyotes, ravens, signs of otters, and very importantly, signs of beavers. In my local habitat, it's the beavers building homes along the rivers who help me to harvest the cottonwood buds. I'll share more about that in the harvesting section. Another cool feature of this trail is the interpretive signs that were created just a few years ago. These signs share more about the cottonwood tree and its relationship to the Metau people, the original inhabitants here, as well as the salmon who depend on the cottonwood to thrive, and many other cottonwood gifts. Humans have long loved cottonwood. Practically every part of the cottonwood tree has been used, whether it was the wood for building, the bark as fiber, or the buds as medicine. My husband prefers cottonwood branches for making friction fires. Today, these water sentinels continue to be cherished for their beauty and their resinous medicine. They form an important part of the ecosystem by cleaning the air and soils, providing habitat for animals, and even supplying winter forage for deer. The next time you're with a cottonwood tree, breathe deep and appreciate all the beauty that this tree has to offer. Do you have experience with cottonwood? I'd love to hear about it in the comments on YouTube or on the official podcast page, herbswithrosaliepodcast.com. Your comments mean a lot to me. I love cultivating a community of kind-hearted, plant-loving folks. Plus, it's always interesting and insightful to hear the experiences of plant lovers out there. And you never know, your suggestion may also help others. And if you love getting quality herbal information you can trust, then I would love to welcome you to my weekly newsletter. Each week, I send out my best herbal tips, recipes, and insights. I love my newsletters, but you don't have to take my word for it. Here's what Catherine from Corvallis, Oregon had to say. Dear Rosalie, your weekly herb-filled emails are a highlight of my week. Unlike all the other alarmist and sales-oriented messages that flood in, yours brings positive energy and truly useful information that I can and do apply right away. They are timed for the seasons and always seem to provide just the amount of information I was curious about. Thank you for your years of sharing your love of herbs and how to use them. Okay, let's dive in. Cottonwood energetics. Mention cottonwood to a room of herbalists and I bet you'll find them swooning. 
Sure, someone in the room might be thinking about its potent antimicrobial properties or the way it can magically relieve muscle pain, but most will be dreaming of that memorable, heady scent that is unmistakably cottonwood. Those living near cottonwood groves will also know the scent as it permeates the air for a few glorious days in early spring when the leaves burst out of their buds. While many swoon over the amber balsamic scent, cottonwood is more than just a pretty smell. For thousands of years, it has been used as medicine and to make a variety of tools. This heady cottonwood scent comes from the resins within the buds. Cottonwood trees produce these resins to protect the tender new leaves and flowers that will soon be emerging. This resin is antimicrobial and antifungal. Cottonwood bud medicine is warming and dispersive. Here's some common ways that herbalists use cottonwood today. A while ago, I did an informal poll in the American Herbalist Guild Facebook group, asking which part of the cottonwood tree people use the most often. Of the people responding, all of them use the buds, while a few people said that they also use the bark and the leaves. So while herbalists are using various parts of the cottonwood, by far the most commonly worked with part is the buds. Here are some specific ways that herbalists commonly work with cottonwood buds. Cottonwood bud oil can be massaged into sore muscles and joints to relieve many aches and pains, such as sore or strained muscles, rheumatic pains, and pains from injuries like bruises. Cottonwood buds are high in a variety of constituents that can directly relieve pain and also modulate inflammation. I'll share how to make cottonwood bud oil in just a bit. In addition to modulating inflammation and decreasing pain, Cottonwood is also strongly antimicrobial. This makes it a fabulous heal-all type of remedy for topical use on a variety of conditions like wounds, rashes, and bug bites. I rarely make an herbal salve that doesn't have some cottonwood in it because it's so universally helpful. But there's also another reason I like to include it. One year, I was cleaning out a box of old salves when I found the very first cottonwood salve I'd ever made. At the time, it was at least six years old. Every other salve that was in that box from the same time period had gone rancid, but the cottonwood salve smelled as divine as the day I made it. I learned two things from this experience. The first, make less salve so I don't end up throwing the excess away. And secondly, cottonwood is an amazing preservative. Since then, I've included cottonwood oil or cottonwood tincture into most of my salves and creams. While I mostly use cottonwood topically, cottonwood is also great as internal medicine. Herbalist Michael Moore wrote a lot about cottonwood medicine. He recommended a tincture of the buds as an excellent expectorant for thick, intractable mucus from bronchitis and bronchorrhea, as it has both expectorant aromatics and analgesic salicylates. Moore also recommended the bitter bark as part of an old-fashioned bitters recipe. He wrote in his book, Medicinal Plants of the Mountain Rest, make an excellent old-fashioned bitters by steeping an ounce of the dried cottonwood bark, one-fourth licorice root, and a teaspoon of cloves in a fifth of brandy. After a month, the bitters have matured and can be sipped on for poor appetite, indigestion, and feverishness. And then, in his typical tongue-in-cheek way, he added, through no fault of the herbs, excess sipping can lead to undesirable side effects. Interesting scientific studies about cottonwood. There are many scientific studies on various species of cottonwood. While some of these studies confirm traditional uses of cottonwood, such as being antimicrobial, they also have shown innovative ways to work with cottonwood for soil remediation, to get rid of warts, and to decrease aging of the skin. Here's a review of some interesting studies on various species of cottonwood. Do you think that you're allergic to cottonwood? One study showed that while many people point to cottonwood as the cause of their seasonal allergies, very few people are actually allergic to it and instead they're reacting to grasses that release pollen at the same time. Poplar trees have been shown to be super effective in removing warts. 
In this study, researchers compared two different types of treatments for warts. One group had their warts treated with smoke from burnt leaves of Populus euphratica tree. I think we should just take a moment here to ponder how cool of a study this is. Smoke treatment, that's really cool. The other group had their warts treated with cryotherapy or freezing off of the warts. Those who received the smoke treatment had 20% better cure rates and a dramatically reduced occurrence rate at almost 30% less. That's super impressive. Cottonwood trees help to clean the soil and air. Numerous studies have been done to determine various populous species' ability to clean contaminated soil as well as to increase the storing and capturing of atmospheric CO2 that contributes to climate change. Turns out that not only does cottonwood remove many contaminants from the soil, it continues to metabolize them into less toxic compounds within the tree. Cottonwood can also protect the skin. I admittedly feel a little weird when I share information about the anti-aging ability of plants. I don't subscribe to the forever young fascination and I don't wanna perpetuate it at all. Wrinkles and mature skin are beautiful. The fact remains, however, that the sun can damage the skin and many botanicals can help protect the skin and keep it healthy. In this study, researchers identified and extracted what they believe to be the major constituents, antioxidant components from Populus nigra. They then tested these in vitro and found that cottonwood extract significantly regulated genes involved in antioxidant defenses, inflammatory response, and cell renewal. Researchers concluded with, the effect of the extract suggests potential anti-aging properties, which could be utilized in cosmetic and nutraceutical formulations. But instead of waiting for a cosmetic formula to be released at your local drugstore, I recommend making your own herbal creams and oils with cottonwood. This is something that we teach in our online medicine making course, Rooted Medicine Circle. See the show notes for more details. There's been a few in vitro studies looking at cottonwood's ability to fight cancer. For example, a 2022 study showed that Populus nigra had a lot of promising benefits against a breast cancer cell line, including showing anti-angiogenic potential and immunomodulatory effects. In the past couple of years, several different species of Populus have had some interesting in vitro tests in regards to lung cancer. It's worth mentioning that we can't assume that in vitro studies will have the same effects in living humans. But this initial type of study may pave the way for more research in this area, possibly even human clinical trials. How to identify cottonwood. Cottonwoods are deciduous trees that are often found growing near water and can easily survive flooding. They are fast growing trees that can be short lived although there are some reports of trees living to 200 or even 400 years old. Trees can grow up to 200 feet, about 60 meters tall, and have an average circumference of 60 inches or 152 centimeters. The species name for cottonwood is populus. It's derived from Latin, which means people. Historians think this might be because cottonwood trees were often planted around public spaces. Common species of cottonwood in North America include Populus nigra, Populus deltoides, and Populus fremontii. Older cottonwood bark is quite wrinkled and varying shades of gray. All cottonwood species have heart-shaped leaves that grow in an alternate pattern along the branches, also along the main stem. One of my favorite sights is when the cottonwood leaves change color in the autumn. It's really stunning to see their yellow and orange leaves against the deep blue of the Metau River and sky. As I've shared, the buds are covered in sticky resin that is now all over my hands, <laughs> which protects the tree from infection. The buds continue to grow through the winter months and then erupt into catkins and leaves in the beginning of the spring. The catkins then grow into green fruits that grow in droops. 
where I live, sometime around May, these fruits erupt, creating a cottonwood snowstorm. The seeds are covered in a white fluff that helps them travel on the wind for many miles. This is how the tree got its common name of cottonwood. Working with cottonwood. Cottonwood buds aren't easily found in commerce, so finding and harvesting them yourself is an herbal rite of passage. To locate a populous tree near you, head to the nearest river or hardwood swamp or lake or drainage ditch. Cottonwoods love to grow on riverbanks and other water drainages. The buds are best harvested at the end of winter or the beginning of spring. This might change a little bit depending on where you live. The harvest time will come as early as January in the south or as late as March in the far north. You want them to be closed and to be thick with resin. When you find that some buds, you wanna give them a squeeze and see if it exudes that resinous medicine. And if so, and it smells really good, then you've got wonderful cottonwood bud medicine. Harvesting cottonwood buds directly from a living tree can harm the tree. Also, low hanging branches with cottonwood buds can be a good source of food for mammals like deer. Luckily, there are many ways to harvest the buds without harming the living tree. Here's some ethical and sustainable harvesting tips. Cottonwood branches are brittle and they easily get lost in windstorms. It's a good practice to visit cottonwood groves after a windstorm to harvest the freshly fallen branches and buds. Where I live, beavers can be really helpful with the harvest. Beavers will cut down trees for their homes, often leaving behind portions with buds. One year, I found a recently felled tree that hadn't been moved into the water yet, and it was loaded with buds. We harvested enough to make oil that lasted for a couple of years. Over the years, I've also headed to open irrigation ditches. Cottonwood buds love to grow where there's water, but they also suck up a lot of water, which can make them a nuisance on irrigation ditches. So every spring, the county comes through and mows down the cottonwood trees, leaving a treasure of buds in their wake. Once you've figured out how to sustainably harvest cottonwood buds well in your area, here's my best tip. Bring a little bottle of either high proof alcohol or some oil with you, like olive oil. Here's why. If you're harvesting ideal buds, they are going to be resinous and sticky. The resin will get all over you, and then they will get all over your steering wheel or your bike handlebars, your clothes, or whatever it is that you touch. The only way to easily get the resin off is by using high proof alcohol to dissolve it or the oil. Even soap and water doesn't work great. It's nice if you have a partner who can just pour a little tiny bit into your hands, and you just rub your hands together really well and repeat. Once you get skilled in this method, you should be able to just get most of it off with very little oil or alcohol. Cottonwood is generally regarded as safe, but there are a few special considerations. Those who are allergic to aspirin should avoid plants or trees with salicylic acid, such as cottonwood and willow. It's also recommended that people who are pregnant or breastfeeding should avoid ingesting salicylate derivatives like those found in cottonwood. Very few people actually have hay fever due to cottonwoods. Instead, they're more likely reacting to grass pollens. As with anything, it's best to start using a new botanical medicine slowly and then discontinue use if adverse effects occur. How to make cottonwood infused oil. Once you're harvesting cottonwood buds, you can make all sorts of wonderful creations. By far, my favorite is to infuse the buds into oil. Humans have been making healing ointments from cottonwood buds for hundreds if not thousands of years. In European herbal history, a poplar buds made into a healing ointment for inflammation first appeared in John Gerard's book published in 1597. This recipe comes straight from my second book, Wild Remedies, How to Forage Healing Foods and Craft Your Own Herbal Medicine, which I co-authored with Emily Hahn. This book is perfect for you if you wanna learn more about the plants growing near you. 
Included with each herbal chapter is safety information, sustainable harvest instructions, and lots of fun and easy recipes like this one. Making cottonwood infused oil is a favorite tradition for many herbalists. The oil captures the cottonwood's alluring scent and is a powerful healing remedy that can be used topically to heal wounds, such as scrapes or burns, as well as to relieve pain and tension of sore muscles. You can even use it as a moisturizing oil to protect and soothe your skin. Although for this purpose, I recommend combining it with other herbal infused oils because it is quite resinous. Here's a tip for making your own cottonwood bud infused oil. After you've harvested cottonwood buds, lay them out to dry and let them sit there for a few days to a week. Go on the longer side if you live in a damp climate. It's also a good idea to keep the jar that you're using for the oil infusion on a plate or bowl to capture any oil overflow. The following recipe makes about two cups of oil. All you need is one and a half cups of fresh cottonwood buds and up to two cups of oil, olive oil or a carrier oil of your choice. Here's how to make it. Place the cottonwood buds in a pint jar. Pour in enough oil to fill the jar and submerge the buds completely. You might not use the entire two cups for this. Use a clean instrument to stir it well and then end by pushing the buds under the oil. Tightly cover the jar and then label it. Place the jar on a plate or on a bowl in a warm place like on your counter so that you can easily keep your eye on it. I like to keep mine in a warm place like by the wood stove. You'll want to infuse the oil for at least four weeks. Many herbalists infuse it for a year as the potency does get stronger with time. During the first few weeks, open the jar daily, stir it well. Fresh cottonwood buds might ferment a bit. And if this happens, then some of the oil might escape the jar. That's okay. That's why I recommend keeping the plate underneath the jar. Once you're done with infusing, you strain the oil through a fine mesh strainer or cheesecloth then squeeze well to extract the oil from the buds. Then you want to store it in a cool, dark place and use within two years. If you'd like a free printable recipe card of this cottonwood infused oil recipe, then visit the show notes at herbswithrosaliepodcast.com or pick up a copy of our book, Wild Remedies, to get more insights and recipes for cottonwood and many other plants. If you enjoyed this video on the health benefits of cottonwood buds and you value trusted herbal information, then I hope that you'll stick around. The best way to get started is to subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. And if you're really into herbs, then sign up for my weekly newsletter so that you can be the first to get my best herbal insights and recipes. I deeply believe that this world needs more herbalists and plant-centered folks and I'm so glad that you're here as part of this herbal community. Also, a big round of thanks to the people all over the world who make this podcast happen week to week. Nicole Paul is the project manager who oversees the whole operation from guest outreach to writing show notes to actually uploading each episode and so many other things I don't even know. She really holds this whole thing together. Francesca is our fabulous video and audio editor she not only makes listening more pleasant, she also adds beauty to the YouTube videos with plant images and video overlays. Tatiana Rusikova is the botanical illustrator who creates gorgeous plant and recipe illustrations for us. I love them. I know that you do too. Christy edits the recipe cards and then Jenny creates them as well as the thumbnail images for YouTube. Michelle is the tech wizard behind the scenes, and Karen is our student services coordinator and customer support. For those of you who like to read along, Jennifer is who creates the transcripts each week. Xavier, my handsome French husband, is the cameraman and website IT guy. It takes an herbal village to make it all happen, including you. Thank you so much for your support through your comments, your reviews, your ratings. I read every review that comes in because they're like a little herbal love letter that brightens my day, like this one. What I love so, so much about Rosalie's podcast is that it's focused on connection. And every single episode, I'm inspired into deeper connection to the plants and to the world around me. Thanks, Rosalie. 
Do you love this podcast? If you leave a review for me on Apple Podcasts, I may be reading your herbal love letter on the show next. Okay, you've lasted to the very end of the show, which means you get a gold star and this herbal tidbit. We aren't the only ones to gather cottonwood resin medicine. These resins are highly cherished by bees who use it to make propolis, which protects their hive. If you'd like to learn more about this potent and magical bee medicine, then check out my recent interview with herbalist, lead maker, and beekeeper, Benjamin Pixie. Here's another interesting tidbit. Tom Whitman, an ecologist in Arizona, found an interesting interdependent cycle between beavers, cottonwood buds, and beetles. He found that when beavers cut and forage cottonwoods, it induces young cottonwood sprouts to produce large amounts of salicins. These are some of the analgesic constituents that we rely on for pain relief in our cottonwood medicines. Which has recently made me wonder if those buds have higher pain relieving abilities. It will be an interesting thing to try out. The trees make these constituents in part to deter many animals and insects from feeding on the sprouts. However, there's one beetle who's attracted to the increased salicin and then feasts on those cottonwood leaves. The beetle then uses these constituents as its own defense against ants. Beavers also accumulate these compounds, which gives their scent marking a special je ne sais quoi, which in part helps them to attract a mate. Cottonwood trees are water sentinels that offer healing gifts to all of those around them, including bees, mammals, fish, birds, and even the soils and waters that they grow in. I hope you enjoyed getting to know this powerful and fascinating tree.